Hello, my name is Dr. Sam High. I am an internal medicine doctor. Thank you for watching. Welcome to Raw Talk. This is episode number 49. Raw Talk is unfiltered and unedited. I give you my thoughts and opinions on health. In this episode, I will be talking about scaling. Can carnivore scale? The truth about meat, sustainability, and feeding the world. But first, a quick announcement. I'm interviewing carnivores for this channel. If you have a story to tell, I'm sure it would help others who are in your situation. Please send an email. Check the description below. Okay, one of the biggest criticisms I hear about the carnivore diet isn't about cholesterol or fiber or vitamins. It's this. What if everyone ate this way? We would run out of animals. It's not sustainable. But here's the truth. That argument is built on lies, assumptions, and propaganda pushed by big food and environmental groups funded by the very industries profiting off monocrop agriculture. If carnivore became mainstream, we wouldn't run out of cows. We'd run out of excuses to keep propping up a broken food system that's destroying our health, our land, and our future. So today, I'm going to dismantle the sustainability myth. I'll show you how eating meat is not only sustainable, but essential, and why a world with more carnivores would actually be healthier, leaner, and more environmentally stable than the one we've got now. Critics love the what if everyone did it scenario. They say we can't all eat steak every day. There aren't enough cows for the whole planet. Meat is destroying the climate. That all sounds convincing until you look at the numbers. Right now we have about 1 million carnivores worldwide. A tiny fraction of the over 8 billion people on earth. Even if that number grew 100 fold to 100 million, that's still barely over 1% of the population. So first, the doomsday scenario is hypothetical. We're nowhere close. But even if we were, the data shows we could feed far more people with regenerative meat than most people realize. We already have, we already produce enough meat. Every year, the world slaughters about 80 billion land animals for food. The majority are chickens and pigs, with beef making up a smaller but significant share. Global beef production alone is in the hundreds of millions of tons annually. And here's the kicker. Much of that beef never makes it to human plates in its most nutrient-dense form. Argu organs. Organs are discarded or processed into pet food. Fat is trimmed off and wasted. Bones, marrow, collagen, all undervalued. A single cow has 400 to 600 pounds of edible meat and fat. Eaten nose to tail, one animal can feed a single person for an entire year or more. Now multiply that across the nearly one and a half billion cows already in existence worldwide. The idea that we're short on animals is nonsense. We're short on proper utilization. Now here's the dirty secret of the plant-based sustainability crowd. Over 75% of the world's agricultural land is used not to feed people directly, but to grow crops for livestock feed. Corn, soy, wheat. These model crops destroy soil, kill biodiversity, and rely on endless chemical inputs. But ruminants, cows, bison, sheep can live on land where crops can't even grow. 
They take grass, which humans can't eat, and turn it into nutrient-dense food. That's not competition. That's synergy. If we stopped funneling soy and corn through feedlots and returned even a fraction of cropland back to pasture, we could support millions, millions more grazing animals while restoring ecosystems at the same time. Factory farming is not carnivore. Let's, let's be clear about that. Carnivore is built on the idea of eating real whole animal foods. And the most sustainable way to produce that food is regenerative ranching. Managed grazing rotates cattle across land, mimicking how wild herds used, used to move. This process builds topsoil, sequesters carbon, restores biodiversity, and replenishes aquifers. Instead of depleting the land, animals heal it. Studies show that properly managed grazing sequesters more carbon than the animals emit, making regenerative beef not just carbon neutral, but carbon negative. So the question isn't, can we scale meat? The question is, can we afford not to? The argument that meat isn't sustainable comes from one place. The assumption that the current system, feedlots plus monocrops plus waste, is the only way forward. But if carnivore grew, the incentives would shift. Less demand for ultra processed junk equals less monocrop acreage. More demand for nutrient dense meat equals more regenerative grazing. Less waste of animal parts equals more efficient use of each life. Right now, Americans throw away 30 to 40% of all food produced. That's not sustainable. But if we use animals nose to tail, one cow could provide steaks, roasts, organs, fat, collagen, gelatin, bone broth, nothing wasted. It takes far fewer resources to maintain ruminants on pasture than to grow, irrigate, fertilize, and process millions of acres of corn and soy. The real unsustainable system isn't meat. It's the processed food empire. Let's look at the bigger picture. We can't talk sustainability without talking health. Chronic disease is the number one driver of healthcare costs. Obesity, diabetes, heart disease, fueled by the processed carb and seed oil diet the FDA and USDA promote. Imagine the savings to individuals and society if even 20% of people reverse their metabolic disease by eating meat instead of processed junk. Sustainability isn't just about the planet. It's about whether the human species can Sustain the level of sickness we're seeing today. Spoiler, it can't. A meat-based diet isn't just sustainable. It's the only real way forward for both human and planetary health. What is the future if carnivore scales? So what if carnivore went mainstream? Here's what, here's what happens. Millions of acres of dead monocrop land are converted back to pasture. Carbon is pulled back into the soil through regenerative grazing. Biodiversity, birds, insects, microbes returns. Humans eat nose to tail, wasting less and nourishing more. Chronic disease rates plummet, slashing the burden on the healthcare systems. The real doomsday scenario isn't everyone eating meat. It's everyone continuing to eat carbs, sugar, and seed oils until the healthcare system collapses. So the next time someone tells you carnivore isn't sustainable, ask them this. Is it sustainable to poison billions of people with carbs and seed oils? 
Is it sustainable to strip the soil bare with endless monocrops? Is it sustainable to spend trillions on preventable chronic disease? The truth is, eating meat the right way, regeneratively, nose to tail, is more sustainable than any plant-based agenda. The system wants you to believe the opposite because it keeps you weak, sick, and dependent. But you don't have to play their game. You can break free. You can eat the way humans were designed to eat. And if more people do that, the world will heal, both our bodies and our land. If you're ready to escape the food matrix, reclaim your health, and join a community that's actually doing it, not just talking about it, join us inside my Break the Food Matrix community. We're building the future of health together. Links below. I'll see you inside. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you want to follow me on Instagram for more content, my username is Sam underscore high MD. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And I will see you in the next video.